Hey everyone, I'm Miles Brandman with MotorOne.com. We are here in Palm Springs, California with Audi and their new Q7, which has significant changes compared to the 2019 model year, which just so happens to be here to my left. There's gonna be a written review up on MotorOne.com, but for now, let's do a video walk around of the new Q7 and kind of point out some of the differences. One thing of note with the 2020 Q7 is that it shares a lot of the exterior design details with that Q8, which also shares its platform with the Q7. And the Q8 is the two row, kind of more lounge out and styled coupe style SUV, whereas the Q7 is the more family friendly three row but we are gonna see similar design details. So up here at the front, we now have a wider grill with these vertical slats in them. This is the black optics package, and so all of the exterior details are gonna be in black. So these would normally be alu optic, like we see here on the 2019 model, but they are here in black. And I think the grill looks much more contemporary. It falls in line with all the new Audi vehicles. It looks really good here. These headlight designs are new and also shared with the Q8. So we have this kind of horizontal LED beam pattern here. LED headlights are standard on the 2020 model as opposed to HIDs as standard on the, or sorry, on the 2020 model as opposed to HIDs on the 2019. You can upgrade from those LEDs to HD matrix lights for Audi and those, this is a complicated one because the HD matrix is a design pattern that is going to uh, adjust the light pattern around objects in the road but current U.S. regulations don't allow this type of light technology. So when regulations do pass, and Audi is saying that we hope it's gonna pass soon, Audi can just basically flip a switch and a software update will enable that technology. But for now, you're just getting a cool look to the HD matrix. Then above that HD matrix is laser lights, Audi's laser light technology, which also includes some really cool animations for the lights. Um, so in addition to really far projections and very good visibility at night, you get these animations. So when you press unlock to the car and you're arriving at the car, it'll give you a little welcome pattern. You lock the car and you're gonna walk away. Gives you a goodbye pattern. Thanks for driving with us today. Uh, other details up at the front, this lower side fascia has been updated and the lower bumper is changed. We can go around to the side and see the wheels. This with a black optics package has 21 inch wheels. 19s are standard, 20s are upgraded. And then these 21s are only with the black optics package. They have this black design detail right in the center of the spoke. I really like the 20 inch wheel options and I think that they fit the ride quality and intended purpose of the Q7 better. You're gonna get softer ride quality. They look really good with their sort of like, it's kind of like a turbine in motion. Those are my favorite wheels, but these do look pretty good. Black mirror caps on the black optics package. This side sill in black is slightly tweaked from the 2019 model year. And then we get to the back and we see more significant changes. So these tail lights are all new and shared with the Q8 that mimicking, mimicking the headlight design with this LED light pattern. And then this is new. It is an alu optic strip that connects these rear tail lights. This 2020 Q7 has a change under the hood. It is a turbocharged V6 now, as opposed to the supercharged V6 from the 2019 model year. It is a twin scroll turbo in the hot V of the engine, and it contributes 335 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque to the four wheels, the Quattro all-wheel drive system via a eight-speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is gonna be 17 city, 20 highway, and 18 combined. So first off, you will notice the piano black uh, striping for this dashboard that runs the whole width of the dashboard. It looks really good and it flows so nicely with this dual screen infotainment setup. So up here we've got a 10.1 inch screen and down here we have an 8.1 inch screen. This top one is for all of your infotainment functions, navigation and those kind of details. And the bottom one is for your HVAC controls and some shortcuts that you can set up in the infotainment itself. I think the dashboard is so much more modern looking. This is the second generation of Audi's virtual cockpit system and it's just so crisp crystal clear and so sharp. Audi was one of the first to do this digital instrument cluster system and they've just continued to refine it and make it better and better. And the home screen is really easy to use. So you've got these general menu setups and it's just like a smartphone, swipe and then prod. And so you could hear that click and then there's the haptic feedback telling me, yes, this is the input you've selected. We've got it going on here. You can jump into Audi's drive select mode and there's all these different drive modes, including an off-road mode, maybe for a low traction situation. And then comfort, auto, dynamic, and all-road. 
And then there's an in individual mode where you can go in here and adjust different things like throttle response, the suspension tuning. There is an optional air suspension on the Q7, which makes ride quality incredibly smooth. But even the standard spring suspension is really good. So you can adjust all these things and have kind of your fine tune mode for individual and then quickly get into that. There is an optional Bang & Olufsen 3D surround sound system with, I think it's like 23 speakers or whatever. It's, it's amazing. And this open pour wood, I realize I'm jumping around here. I'm just trying to like get in all the stuff in this new Q7, but this open pour wood is an option for the trim and it's got a wonderful texture to it and blends really nicely with this piano black servicing. The piano black, I'm, I'm sort of a mixed review on the piano black because it looks amazing when it's clean. The moment it's dirty, it looks like it's been weathered. So either dust will collect on there or it will show scratches very easily. So it's just a neat aesthetic layout until, until it's not. This, um, all the HVAC controls down here are so easy to use and you will learn this system really easily. And as I mentioned, you can add shortcuts so you can put things like your favorite radio stations from the infotainment and then you can press this button here and it brings down your shortcuts. And you can have up to, I think, 32 of them. There are a few different seating configurations you can do, standard leather seats, standard panoramic sunroof, and uh, heated seats and all that is, is, is standard, but you can upgrade to Valcona leather seats with ventilation. This second row here, as we've uh, shown it with the rear seat, or the second row of seating, which splits 35, 30, 35, can fold forward and you can get access to the third row where there are standard power rear seats. So you can power fold and open those and I can do those with the press of a button here or at the tailgate. That is the new Q7 interior and uh, having driven it a little bit so far, I am very pleased with the changes. It not only looks better on the outside and is way more functional and modern on the inside, but the ride is fantastic. So yes, look for the full written review on motor1.com. Again, I'm Miles Brenman. Thank you for watching.